This is the Music History Today podcast for July 17th. On today's show, the world loses Billie Holiday, John Lennon gets told to leave, and Handel gives us water music. First up, though, on this date in 1939, Charlie Barnett recorded the song Cherokee. In 1954, the Clovers were among the performers at Hollywood's Rock and Roll Jubilee concert, and the first Newport Jazz Festival was held. In 1956, the musical film High Society opened. In 1965, the Four Tops started their sold-out European tour, with Beatles manager Brian Epstein handling tour promotion duties during their British leg. In 1967, the Jimi Hendrix Experience played their final concert as opening act for the Monkees. Yes, the Monkees. It didn't last long, that's why this was the final concert. Anywho, in 1968, the Beatles movie Yellow Submarine premiered in theaters. In 1970, the Guess Who performed at a state dinner for Prince, now King Charles, at the White House during the Nixon administration. In 1974, the United States government told John Lennon that he had 60 days to leave the country. He fought the order and eventually won. Also in 1974, the first quadraphonic recording studio opened in London, England. In 1975, Ringo Starr divorced his wife, Maureen Cox. Also in 1975, Bob Marley and the Wailers played one of their landmark concerts, this time in London, England. In 1979, Gary Moore left the group Thin Lizzy. In 1981, the movie whose theme song by Lionel Richie and Diana Ross became a huge hit, Endless Love premiered in movie theaters. In 1987, Keith Richards signed a solo record deal with Virgin Records. In 1990, Motown Records label owner Barry Gordy married his wife, Grace Easton. In 1991, the surviving members of Leonard Skinner reunited. In 1993, Slash played his last concert with Guns N' Roses, at least until their reunion in 2016. In 2004, audience members walked out of a Linda Ronstadt concert in Las Vegas after she told the audience to go see Michael Moore's anti-George W. Bush movie, Fahrenheit 9-11. In 2011, Andrew Stockdale of Wolf Mother was arrested in Australia for being drunk in a bar and interrupting a Beatles tribute band who was playing so that he could sing Let It Be and then refusing to leave. And in 2014, the celebrity reality TV show Leanne and Eddie about Leanne Rimes and husband actor Eddie Cyprian premiered on television. In classical music in 1717, Handel premiered his piece, Water Music. In 1943, opera legend Marian Anderson married architect Orpheus H. Fisher. In theater in 1958, the musical Five Finger Exercise opened in London, England. And in 1966, the musical It's a Bird, It's Superman closed on Broadway. In award ceremonies that were held on July 17th, in 2013, the French government made Bono a commandeur of the French Order des Arts et des Lettres. And I know I just butchered that whole entire thing. I'm sorry to the French-speaking people. Albums that were released on July 17th include in 1967 when The Temptations released with a lot of soul. In 1970, the Bonzo Dog Band released The Beast of the Bonzos. In 1972, The Doors released Full Circle. In 1978, the soundtrack to the movie Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band was released. That's the movie that had Peter Frampton and the Bee Gees. The movie bombed. In 1981, Journey released Escape, which didn't bomb. It became a huge hit. In 1982, Judas Priest released Screaming for Vengeance. In 2000, AHA released Minor Earth, Major Sky. In 2006, The Who released the EP, Wire and Glass. In 2007, Colby Calais released Coco. In 2010, The Goo Goo Dolls released the EP, Waiting for the Rest of It. And in 2012, Jack Bruce released Jack Bruce and his big band, Live 2012. And Soul Asylum released Delayed Reaction. 
Singles that were released in the UK on July 17th include in 1981 when Electric Light Orchestra, or ELO if you prefer, released Hold On Tight, and in 1995 REM released Tongue. Meanwhile, in America, in 1962, Mary Wells released You Beat Me to the Punch, and Elvis Presley did a twofer. He released She's Not You, and Just Tell Her Jim Said Hello. In 1965, The Righteous Brothers released Unchained Melody. In 1967, The Beatles did a twofer. They released All You Need Is Love and Baby You're a Rich Man. In 1972, Yes released America and Bread released Mother Freedom. In 1973, Paul Simon released Loves Me Like a Rock. In 1978, Donna Summer released Je T'aime Moi Non Plus. And in 1995, Hootie and the Blowfish released Only Want to Be With You. Before we continue, we'd like to tell you about the Music History In-Depth podcast, where we go in-depth on the history of some of the events from the daily version of the Music History Today podcast. The Music History In-Depth podcast drops new episodes every Tuesday in audio and video form wherever you get your podcasts. We also have the Music Halls of Fame podcast, where we honor a year in music along with a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, along with who we think should be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Plus, we honor a different museum, Walk of Fame, or Hall of Fame. The Music Halls of Fame podcast drops every Thursday in audio and video form wherever you get your podcasts. Now, back to the Music History Today podcast. Artists who were born on July 17th include country music superstar Luke Bryan, singer Callie Uchis, Geezer Butler of Black Sabbath, Ron Ashton of the Stooges, Mike Vale of Tommy James and the Shondells, drummer Wolfgang Fleur of Kraftwerk, Spencer Davis of the Spencer Davis Group, Chet McCracken of the Doobie Brothers, singer Nicolette Larson, Brian Glasscock of the Motels, singer Phoebe Snow, Bruce Crump of Molly Hatchet, Natasha Hamilton of Atomic Kitten, DJ Minute Mix of PM Dawn, singer Regina Bell, Mick Tucker of Sweet, jazz pianist and composer of Charlie Brown's Christmas, Vince Giraldi, singer Gail Garnett, Broadway singer Mimi Hines, singer Jeremy Felton, rapper Juan Wu of the group Seventeen, Singer Yondry, singer Tom Fletcher of McFly, Kim Shattuck of The Muffs, singer Peppermint Harris, entertainer extraordinaire the legendary Miss Diane Carroll, composer Francesco Fancioli, bassist Abraham Laboriel, singer Susan Ashton, guitarist Mary Osborne, and saxophonist Fudd Kendricks. Artists who unfortunately passed away on July 17th include composer Johann Kittel, who passed away in 1682 at the age of 29. Composer Pascal Colles passed away in 1709 at the age of 60. Composer Wenzel Perk passed away in 1763 at the age of 45. Composer Jean Frederick Edelman passed away in 1794 at the age of 45. Composer Christian Graff passed away in 1804 at the age of 80. Composer Joseph Gratz passed away in 1826 at the age of 65. Composer Benny Agressi passed away in 1851 at the age of 37. Pianist Carl Tausig passed away from typhoid in 1871 at the age of 29. Composer Gabor Matre passed away in 18. 1875 at the age of 77. Composer John Farmer passed away in 1901 at the age of 64. The aforementioned composer Francesco Fancioli passed away on his 62nd birthday in 1915. Composer Henri Constant Gabriel Pern passed away in 1937 at the age of 73. Composer Bonislaw Zulk passed away in 1955 at the age of 73. Songwriter Joseph DeVoit passed away in 1956 at the age of 78. In 1959, jazz great Billie Holiday passed away from cirrhosis of the liver brought on by years of drug and alcohol abuse at the age of 44. 
she was arrested and handcuffed for drug possession and placed under police guard a month earlier as she lay dying in the hospital. The police pulled the police guard a few hours before her death once it was painfully obvious that she would not survive that day. Sad ending to an extraordinary and troubled life. We go more into her life and death on our Music History In-Depth podcast, which is on this network that you're listening to right now or wherever you get your podcasts. The episode has already dropped. Composer Luis Cosme passed away in 1965 at the age of 57. Composer August Behrens passed away in 1966 at the age of 71. Jazz saxophonist John Coltrane passed away from cancer in 1967 at the age of 40. The legendary Mr. John Coltrane. Singer Cliff Edwards passed away in 1971 at the age of 76. Pianist and singer Roosevelt Sykes passed away in 1983 at the age of 77. Singer and actor J. DeLos Joiks passed away in 1984 at the age of 89. Composer Zesla Merrick passed away in 1985 at the age of 93. Jazz trumpet player Howard McGee passed away in 1987 at the age of 69. Composer Rainer Cunard passed away in 1995 at the age of 58. Composer Carlos Malagat passed away in 1995 at the age of 91. Musician Amancio de Silva passed away in 1996 at the age of 60. The bassist for The Animals, who also became Jimi Hendrix's manager, Chaz Chandler, passed away in 1996 at the age of 57. Composer Ronald Tremaine passed away in 1998 at the age of 74. Drummer Kevin Wilkinson of the Waterboys committed suicide in 1999 at the age of 41. Pianist Rosalind Turek passed away in 2003 at the age of 88. One of the pioneers of Jamaican ska music, singer Laurel Aitken passed away in 2005 at the age of 78. Musician and songwriter Sam Myers passed away in 2006 at the age of 70. Singer Gordon Waller of Peter and Gordon passed away in 2009 at the age of 64. Musician and producer with Nashville's iconic A-Team Session Musicians Group, Fred F. Carter Jr. passed away in 2010 at the age of 76. Jazz vibraphonist Peter Appleyard passed away in 2013 at the age of 84. Entertainer Elaine Stritch passed away in 2014 at the age of 89. Songwriter Gary S. Paxton passed away in 2016 at the age of 77. Entertainer Zizi Jean Mayer passed away in 2020 at the age of 96. And the opera director of the Birmingham Opera Company from 1987 to 2020, Graham Vick passed away from COVID-19 in 2021 at the age of 67. Next time on the Music History Today podcast, it is July 18th, when in 1991, the first Lollapalooza Music Festival began. Thank you very, very much for listening, if you're listening on the podcast, or if you're watching this on YouTube or Spotify video. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share this podcast. And if you like this podcast and you want more of our podcasts, then I invite you to check out our Music Halls of Fame podcast in either audio or video form. It drops every single Thursday. You can listen to the audio version of this podcast on Apple, Anchor, Spotify, Google Podcasts, CastBox, wherever you get your podcasts from, all under Music History Today. You can also watch the video version of this podcast on either YouTube or Spotify Video, also under Music History Today. Our Facebook page is Music History Today. Our website is jamaritaniamedia.com. And our Twitter is twitter.com backslash Music History Day. Thank you very, very much for listening or watching.